All right, gang, here we go into a new animation tutorial, and what we're going to do in this lesson, as I just hit preview play here in the Wic editor, is we're going to go over how to kind of animate text and create an animated quote or a music lyric like I've done in this example. And so uh, there's some things we'll go over as far as a couple different techniques, but a lot of this stuff we have already kind of learned. So I'm just going to kind of walk you through my process as far as putting this together goes so you can kind of see an example and have that to go from there. So um, what I'll do to go ahead and get started in the WIC editor here is click on new to create a new project. And so obviously the first thing you will have to do is choose a quote or music lyric that you would like to animate. And so um, then you're going to want to break up that quote or lyric into a few different um, lines or layers. So each line of my quote is going to have its own layer. So I think I had four uh, different lines, so I will need four different layers. And so there we go. So I've got layer one, layer two, layer three, and layer four. And I'm just clicking to put uh, frames just on the first frame of each of those layers. And now I'll just go ahead and take my type tool and type those out. So first line was once in a while. And the other thing I do want you to try and play with is the uh, text or that's the type, the type of text that you have. Now, a little issue with keeping my text in here. So we'll go once in a while. And then we will go ahead to my arrow tool here and then click back and then type in the next line. You get shown the light. This is a lyric from one of my favorite bands, The Grateful Dead. And then in the strangest of places. And then last one. If you look at it right, period. Okay, so I've got my lines here. Um, I've got them placed in a way that works for me. You don't have to necessarily place yours going across diagonal. If you want to have these rotated or slanted or going straight down or any other arrangement, obviously that is all fine and dandy up to you. Um, I'm going to choose a background color for my project before I kind of go ahead and keep going. And so click that gearbox in the corner and then um, we can really go with just about any color. I don't have to do the same color as I did before. Maybe I'll go with like a light greenish type of color this time just to switch it up. And then I'll hit apply. I'll also take this opportunity to name my project and we'll call it Lyric. Again, just hit apply and then I can X out of that. So I want to then play with the fonts. All right, so click on your text box, go over to the side over here where we see font families and go ahead and choose some different fonts for each one of your lines or words in your lyrics. And think about how the type of fonts can kind of reflect on what you're actually putting in the words, what's in the words. So I wanted a lighter kind of font because this lyric is about light, right? So that kind of um, fits where the font kind of reflects the words in the lyrics. So this one says strange in it. So maybe I'll choose something that's a little more of a strange or unusual type of font to possibly use for this. So just kind of scrolling through yeah, that's a weird name, Fajala, <laughs> however that's pronounced, but not quite a weird font. Um, let's see, strange. Maybe this one. Yeah, there we go. We could kind of stretch these out and make them bigger too, you know, and um, you don't have to actually type in what type of uh, font size you want. You can just really go in and stretch these out to make them the size that you want to be. And then this last one, I'll change the font of this one as well. Maybe scroll way down so I get something kind of different. Uh, that slacky font would have been a good one for that. 
um, but I kind of like the idea of a cursive font here because it's, you know, if you look at it right, it's kind of like the main point. And I feel like that kind of goes well in sort of a cursive font. Um, what was that other font that I saw? That would have been a good one, I think, for this one. Because this one is a little bit hard to read. I'm kind of choosing these at random. I had some particular ones that I used in my other one, but it can take a while to look through for these specific, specific fonts. Um, goblin. It was had to have been before the G's. I kind of like this one, actually. It's a little more kind of like a fun um, font, you know, for the strangest of places. Lyric. All right, so again, you can change your font colors as well over here if you um, click on your font and then change the color fill. Um, I had mine in white before, and I thought that that looked pretty good. And so maybe I'll go with something like that again. Again, you can do any colors any colors under the rainbow that you would like to use for this white black or otherwise okay so now that i got all my lyrics kind of in here i can start to think about actually animating them with some tweens just changing the spacing up a little bit all right so um what i want to do is kind of take these lines and i have them Oh, whoops, I actually put them all in the same layer. So I'll have to kind of just cut these. So I'm hitting Command X, and then I'm gonna to go to layer two and then hit Command V to paste that. And then I'm gonna go back here, Command X to this one, and then go to layer three and hit Command V, and then Command X with this last one, and then go to layer four and hit Command V. All right, so now I have each one of those lines on its own layer. Because if it's going to use a tween, um, then each thing will need its own layer. All right? Anything that uses a tween will want its own layer. And I'm stretching out these frames here to make space for me to add in the action. I want to say I ended up with actually like 70 frames for this animation said and done. You want to make sure that you have enough pause or timing with this so that the words can actually be read. So this might be one of our longer animations that we've done so far, just because you want to actually give the viewer time to read um, the animation. And I think actually I needed a fifth layer, um, even though the last bit of text I was going to put in is the name of the artist that or the person who wrote this text. Um, but I'm going to add it on its own layer. The author. It actually may have been the other um, writer with the Grateful Dead, but Jerry Garcia was the singer, and he may have been responsible for these lyrics, but it might have been Robert Hunter, another writer for them. But I'll change this uh, font to white as well, and just leave that small in the corner. All right, so now I'm ready to animate, right? So. What I want to do is actually start with all of these layers with the words off the side. So now I'm at the point where I want to move those all off the edges of the frame. So I'm going to take these and, um, and just move them off the side, right? So I'm going to have this one kind of pop in that way. So now I'll add a tween, right? And then go to the end here, or actually I want to do it somewhere in the middle, right? Somewhere in the middle here, I will add another tween spot, and on this one, I'll move the words into my frame. So now what will happen is that word comes in. And so the next one I can move down to, and I will move that also off the side. Or I think actually what I wanted to do with this one was just make it fade in. So I'm going to go ahead and hit the tween button because that's going to kind of just stay put. Um, but I want it to start its tween right about here. So I'm going to hit the tween button there, and then I want that to fade in. And I think I went right around, somewhere around the 30th frame for this next one. Again, it's all going to be different depending on um, what your actual uh, words are with yours. Um, I don't know if I need that first frame. I think I want to just try and take this and turn the opacity down here to nothing. Will it stay that way? 
Okay, no, it's still on there before that. So what I think I want to do is just take this spot and pull it back a little bit. But again, I want to take that um, first frame here, turn the opacity down, and then have that kind of fade in. Okay, so that's giving me a little bit of a hard time. Maybe I'll try and undo a couple steps here. I think I may have messed it up when I took out that first frame. So just going to look at this one more time. So um, right here, I want this opacity to go down and then have that fade in. But now it looks like it's giving me a hard time. Sometimes um, these will get a little screwy if we mess with the tweening too much. So I'm um, going to try this one more time. Add tween. And I want this frame to really start over here. Um, and then where I want the tween to end is a little bit more over here. And I apologize for this taking a little bit longer than intended. Again, this was just supposed to be a video to try and show my process um, going through my example. You may be able to do a lot of this just based on a lot of the stuff we've done so far in class and not even really need all of this demonstration because a lot of this we have done already. So. Um, but just wanted to try and put this together. Yeah, so that's giving me a hard time. I might have to, um, whoops, I meant to delete. I want to get rid of all this tween stuff. Maybe there's something at the end. Nope. Okay, so here, let's try and break this apart. Um, so now it's just basic text again. It gets turned into a clip when you hit the tween button. Um, so what I wanted this to do was to be transparent. Let's hit the tween button and then just do it one more time here. Add tween and then we want to turn the opacity down on this so that it will fade. Let's see if I hit play. Okay, nice. So that works. So it comes in and then the other one fades in. All right, so the timing wasn't quite what I had worked out in my other final example, but that's just the way it goes sometimes with these things. Um, and I want this one to maybe come up from bottom. So what I want to do is start with it down on the bottom. Um, I want this tween to start maybe right here where this after this line comes in. And then I'll go ahead a little bit further down, hit the add tween button, and then move this up to here. So that will line will fly in. So I have once in a while, you get shown the light in the strangest of places. So kind of popping up from the bottom. And then I think with this last one, what I was going to do as I kind of scroll down the end here and go past this. And also one thing is if your timeline is really big chunks, you can turn your frame size from, um, it might be defaulted at medium down to small. And that just kind of allows you to see more frames um, in your window here. But I do want to extend all these frames um, way more down. I think I had it about 70 frames for this total animation here so that it could be red. Um, when you think about it, it seems like a lot of frames maybe for what we've been doing, but um, it's only about, if you divide 70 by 12, you know, five seconds or so of animation. Um, and then bring this last one down here. And so like I was saying, uh, trying to do this, um, if you look at it right, part. And so I'm going to add tween. I'm um, going to then go over here, add another end tween point. Um, the first point I want to bring out over on the side, and then I might add a little rotation to this just for the fun of it. So if I go over here, add a maybe two time rotation, and then hit play, that'll kind of bring that um, lyric spinning into the frame there. And that's kind of a cool way to get that in there. And then the last thing, a uh, last layer that I wanted to add in a tween for was just the name of the author. And then just one more ending tween spot. And maybe I'll just bring that one kind of off from the bottom. All right. So why is it just, um, let's see, layer five. What did I do here? So on this point, I want it to be down here. And then let's say, oops. Oh, okay, so I see what I did. I need to pause this um, right here. I need this to be up in the frame. 
All right, nice. So that should finish it up. So once in a while, you get shown the light in the strangest of places if you look at it right. And then the author's name pops in at the very end. And so I did do a little bit of frame by frame adding into this as well. And I think that's something that we could do um, and it can be a nice touch to add. You know, I added some little like light rays coming off of the light here. And that was my second layer here. So if I wanted to add something like that coming off, I could add a frame right here after this. Um, actually, you know what, maybe that's not because I just wanted to add a drawing onto it. I don't need to think I need to even add another frame. I think I just draw directly on it, if I can recall correctly. So if I go here and just add like a light ray, it should add it. Oh, I'm not sure what layer it's adding it on, but I do want it to add that frame onto here. Let's see if I can, my pencil color should be white. Oh, maybe I want to do these with brushes. Yeah, let's try that. So just a couple of lines here. Let's see, is that in there the whole time though? Yeah, see that's in there the whole time. So let's undo that. I want to say that we want to add a couple of frames here, but then that seems to make my text disappear. So I think what I can do then is just take this text, copy it, and then paste it. Command C, Command V. Oh, but that took the whole tween. I just want just the text part. Um, so let's see if I can select just the text. Command C, Command V. Okay, so now just the text is on that frame. All right, so that's a little bit of a tricky part right there. Let's just test play this, make sure I didn't mess anything up. Yeah, so, all right, so perfect. So that worked out well. So now I'm gonna add some of these light rays kind of come off of here. And so I'm just gonna go with kind of like a line here. And then um, I will want to control C, go next to it, control V, and then I can add another line coming off, command C, and then command V to add another frame here with another little light beam kind of coming off of that. So then you can see those kind of pop up one, two, three at a time. So that's kind of a nice little touch to add in to, to your animation. So um, I think that pretty much does it for this animation tutorial. I know this ran a little bit longer than intended, but hopefully you got some good info out of it and that we'll have some fun creating your own animated quotes or lyrics. Um, be sure to anim uh, export your animations as GIFs. When you're all finished, we'll go export, export GIF. Unless you add sound to your uh, animation, then you'll want to export it as a video. All right, guys, that is it for this animation tutorial. Hope you have fun and get creative with your own animated quotes and lyrics.